what we have done unintentionally, and I think unwittingly, have allowed parents and people with disabilities to buy into this notion that if they're with their own kind, that people with disabilities want to be and are best with their own kind. And what that means is we've said that people with disabilities are a subphyla or a subcategorization of the human race. It should be, regardless of whether or not you have a disability or not, you're welcome to Del Webb if you're 55. And the criteria is the diagnosis of age, not the diagnosis of disability. Having said that, I'm also going to posit that it's easy for advocates, including you and I, to stand on the sidelines and to not berate, but to be critical of separate segregated services. They don't exist in a vacuum. They exist because we have failed to offer options. So if you're looking at a family, going back to our previous discussion, that is thinking about safety and love and concern, Dan, what that means is they're saying, if you won't do it, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be the one that's going to protect my child. And as a result, what they say is it's best done in a segregated environment, whether that's a segregated school, a segregated recreation program, a segregated camp, or a segregated village. But this is not just the fault of parents and advocates or people with disabilities. It's our fault for not providing an alternative and not helping people invent the